Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So in today's lesson to start the show, I'm going to talk about the 18MA um, and really just the moving average complex and how I think it can be used in your favor. But I do get a lot of questions as to why I use an 18MA. So I am going to cover that on this show. Um, let's go ahead and get into the agenda. Um, so I, yeah, I'm going to explain why I like the 18. I'm going to talk about the slope and why it's so important to me. All right. And then secondly, I view the 18 as a trend line replacement, and I'll show you why. Um, and then finally, when you use it in conjunction with the 40, it gives you a really powerful visual look that can quickly identify which are the strongest stocks uh, and which are the strongest trends to be playing. Once we're done with that, we're going to go through the uh, individual symbols requests that came through. Let's go ahead and get going with this lesson. I'm starting out with a chart of the QQQ because I want to show um, a couple different things. And I, I wanted to use something that's a little bit more volatile uh, and actually not going to necessarily give like the perfect examples because you don't, the, the, moving averages can be messy. All right. You don't, it's a moving line. It's not a straight line. It's not a firm line. It has a little give to it. So you have to accept that if you're going to use a moving average, it's not a perfect, uh, instrument from, uh, from any stretch of the imagination. Now, what I've done on this chart, I've, I get so many questions as to why I use an 18 rather than a 20. OK. And um, in fact, what I'm going to do very quickly is just uh, turn off the 40. I want you to just see the 18 and the and the 20 together. The 18 is the magenta color, like pinkish color. And the 20 is the uh, green line. As you can see, when I tell every single guy that emails me about this, uh, you can use a 20 if you'd rather use a 20. It doesn't. It's not a big deal. The reason why I use the 18 is because you will see shifts in the um, slope a little bit more quickly. It'll it'll adjust a little bit faster at turning points. In most cases, you will get the, the slope going, um, turning to the upside and officially being an upslope, being going from a downslope to an upslope more quickly. That's the one thing. And so if you see what's going on right now in the QQQ, this this line is most likely going to shift, even if it's a couple days. It's going to give me a little bit of an edge over the 20. That's really it. Now, you could say that, well, yeah, but it's going to give you some more false signals. And that's true, too. But I don't really use it that way. It's not like the moment it shifts, I'm doing something. It's just giving me visual cues. And when I start to see... Uh, the momentum uh, of the line, meaning the, the slope of the line, start to shift a little bit and flatten out, then I know there's a pretty good chance we're probably heading into some kind of a consolidation. So I view that as being a huge edge. Now, let me put the 40 back up. Um, but what the other thing I want to show here is how the 18 or, or the 20, either one, Look at how I've drawn in trend lines and we can see that when we draw in the proper trend line, in a lot of cases, when you break the trend line, you're basically breaking the 18. The slope of the trend line and the slope of the 18 are basically the same. Most cases, I'm when I'm drawing in a trend line, I'm, I'm basically overwriting the 18. It looks the same or the 20. They're both they're both valid from that standpoint. All right. And I did this to the downside. You can see it. It is the trend line is the 18 here. Right now, we might have some periods where it gets a little sloppy and it might not be exact. But even in a, when I draw it this way, we are breaking the moving average at the same time we're breaking the um, trend line. And um, and then we make a move to the upside. I can draw in my trend line connecting the low. And here it is breaking the 18 and the trend line on the same bar. Even on this little consolidation pattern, it's the same thing. You see how the slope and the uh, slope of the trend line and slope of the 18 are the same. The break bar, the bar where you're really breaking is within a bar or two. All right. And then we get an upslope to the upside. Another trend line break that is uh, confirmed by the 18. Now, the 18 and the 20 are kind of ra uh, moving above and below, but they have the same essential trend. They're giving you the same, same feedback, all right, in this case. Um, and then even what's happening recently, we broke the trend line and we broke uh, the 18 essentially within the same bar. 
So uh, this is a really good thing to keep an eye on. I used to draw in so many trend lines on charts. I mean, it was like crazy how many trend lines I had. Um, and I still do because I do like to, you know, if we break a trend line, I do like to see that. But now I know that if we're breaking the trend line, in a lot of cases, we're breaking the 18. All right. Let me just show you another example. Um, and I want to use the, uh, well, first, let's look at the monthly chart. Look at NOW on a monthly do you see how when the 18 is rising like this, it acts as like a trampoline on each pullback, right? Now, in order to confirm that what we're seeing, we've got a 40 on here. And when 40 and the 18 are basically moving up at the same rate, you've got an incredibly strong trend in place, all right? This is this is without, I don't have an indicator up. I don't need an indicator. If I see this, I know I have a strong trend. I don't have to look at MACD or ADX in this instance, because if I know I have these and they're basically running somewhat parallel, it doesn't have to be exactly parallel, but close to parallel, I want to be buying pullbacks into the zone or into the area around the 18 whenever that happens. Now, there are times when the 18 starts to really move at a much faster rate than the 40. Now that's actually giving us really interesting feedback. It's telling us we probably need to be ready for some type of a top to form in some type of a correction. So you want to be on the lookout for that when these lines start to separate a little bit more quickly. Now they can both go up at the same. So if they're both turning up and they're moving up like this, this is still okay. Like this is still a viable trend, but then this starts to really climb as this is staying at the same slope. So this slope starts to go up and this starts to stay about the same and this gets stretched away from the 18. This is something we want to be on the lookout for. Um, so we want to constantly, constantly be on the lookout for trends where the 18 and the 40 are running basically parallel. I've got this parallel. I want to look to sell rallies in this and look to short in those, right? And then we can go back and look for periods where basically these are running at about the same rate. Well, we didn't get much in terms of pullbacks, but we would be looking for pullbacks during these periods versus something like this where we're in a transitional phase, transitional phase, transitional phase, transition, right? Now look at the trend. So we can play pullbacks during these periods. It kind of will zero you in not only on what the best uh, time frame is to trade, but also what the best trends are uh, that are out there. So um, keep an eye out for these three keys. And I think they can really add value for you if you're using these two lines as a buddy system. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. Now, my research can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. You can also uh, find information on the trading school. And I call it a trading school because right now there's two courses in the bundle and I'm adding a third over the next month or two. Um, so check that out if you have an interest. And also, if you just want to get started, I would suggest starting with the book. I'm offering at a discount right now in an ebook format. Um, go ahead to rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book for more information. So starting out with the uh, DIA, just to give us a feel for what I think, this is basically my favorite index right now, or at least one that I'm really watching closely uh, for a pullback. Um, if you look at the way this is going here, uh, we're, we've basically broken out of this base. We've got um, MACD on the monthly turning up. We've been in a low ADX condition on the monthly. And we were in a low ADX condition on the weekly, and now we're moving up and breaking out. So general rule of thumb is, especially when you have back-to-back -back time frames in low ADX condition, the first time you break out of a basing pattern, it causes the ADX to move up. We want to buy the first pullback. All right. That's just a general rule of thumb. You can, I talk about this in my courses, um, so anyway, we want to look and take a hard look at uh, at this one, I think, if we get a little bit of a dip. Now, the question becomes, are we going to get that dip? Um, there's a couple of different things going on. Number one, if we look at MACD, we can see a bottom here and then we made a lower low. We're making a lower low in MACD while we're making a higher low in price. So again, this is another um, pattern from my course. It's a call. I call it a reverse divergence. And um, 
what I, what I would tell you is, is that that's bullish, right? That's a positive thing. But there's also another pattern that's developing that I think is a little bit more imminent here. And that's where the MACD lines are going in one direction and price in the four. So, so basically the 18 and the four are going in one direction. You see how the 18 is moving up and the four is moving up and they're basically parallel in this direction. And then we've got the the uh, MACD and its signal line going in the opposite direction. So I call this a counter parallel, another um, pattern from my courses. Now, it, what I would tell you here is that I'm thinking that we're going to get an ABC correction. And I'm actually thinking about it more for, um, you know, the QQQ and the SPY. They're a little bit more blatant in the way they're setting up. Now, I do want to make sure you understand something that while I am looking for a pullback based on that, and uh, I, I, I am still considering the fact that we've got reverse divergence, I just think we've got a little bit more space in here where we could pull back a little bit. The ADX line was up around 70. It's come down to about 48. I mean, I'd like to see it at least get down maybe even to 40 or something like that. Not necessarily looking for this to crash or anything, but it's this is an overbought, oversold oscillator as well, as is MACD, right? A lot of times people think about them as momentum indicators, but really they it can get overbought just like anything else. And I think we need to alleviate some of that overbought condition before this is ready to go up again. Now, it might just mean this needs to go sideways and it very well could do that. But if we can do that while these pull down a little bit, this is going to be in a much stronger position. All right. So that's kind of what I'm on the lookout for here. But I am watching this one, uh, this specific index for a pullback. Now, I don't necessarily feel the same way about the QQQ. I'm not really looking for, a, you know, like a pullback to play. It's not, you know, like you think about it, the trend shift was down here. This is really where you wanted to be a buyer if you're looking at getting in early, which is what I think the, D the DIA looks like to me. It looks like you're getting in early if you buy a pullback, if, uh, if it can pull back here. Where this one, we've made this move. We had a huge run and a really good year last year. I kind of think we could spend the first you know, three to six months consolidating. I mean, we could push to a new high, no doubt. But is it going to start another move like this or like that? I don't think so. I'm not, I'm, I'm not in that camp right now. And I think right now, one thing we just need to be on the lookout for, as I mentioned in the lesson, we have broken the trend line. Now we're coming up the test. So we've got the two here. We, we have the one is the trend line break. Two is the test. Now, if we come back down through here, we've got some presumptive evidence that the, the trend is trying to shift back down and probably just come down and test support. Um, down in here and a little bit and work at it a little bit closer to the 18 week line. I'm not really calling for any kind of a big reversal, but maybe something on a shorter term basis. All right, let's look at IWM. Uh, this is a little bit different because this didn't have a big run to the upside and this didn't break out. So this is not the Dow and it's not the QQQ um, because it didn't have a good year last year. And uh, the Dow Jones has already broken out. This one hasn't quite done it, but look at what's going on. We're definitely showing signs of life here with this move to the upside, okay? We've got some pretty decent action in MACD. And the reason why I say that is we've created some separation between MACD and the signal line that's allowing for this to pull back, and yet the, the MACD is staying well above the signal line. I view that as a good sign. I also like the fact that Green DI is breaking out above all these highs. It's at the highest level that it's been in a very long time. Um, look at the volume pattern. You see a strong volume to the upside and then the light volume on the pullback. These are all good things. We need confirmation with a higher low. Almost look at it like a little cup and uh, handle almost. It's not exact. It's a little sloppy. But if we can come back up through 200 and break out again, especially if we get the relative strength, let's take a look at this relative strength. Started to perk up a little bit. We want to see this relative strength line also kick in, turn up and confirm what we're seeing on a price basis. If we get that, we should start to feel pretty good about this. And I do believe that will improve the overall market condition out there for us trying to pick names, um, play stocks, and especially on an over, say, an intermediate term basis. All right. Now, I got a request um, about looking at some of these. These are a counter trend play in the uh, banking area. There are a couple ideas here I'm going to go through. And um, what I'll say here is, so I'm going to kind of look at this as like a little mini lesson, really, because uh, I want to cover something I'm going to do on these next two stocks that, that could be helpful. 
Now, specific to this, I don't know that I'd want to play it on this specific pattern because we've got earnings coming. I really love how stock charts will allow you to put the earnings right here so we can see 112. That's tomorrow. We're going to have earnings right before the market opens. You see the BMO tells you right before the market opens. So that's really nice to be able to have that information. Now, if I, if, let's just say earnings were like a month away. All right. And, and here's what we'd want to do. We've, we're looking at the weekly and we're saying, wow, this is a nice move to the upside, but it's not that powerful. And really, Green DI only came up to where Red DI was right now. MACD has improved. And I'm not saying this hasn't improved. This is showing a lot of improvement. But could it come back and test a little bit more? Could it form some kind of a retracement if you wanted to play a reversion trade back towards the mean? And I would tell it back towards the weekly mean. And I would say you can definitely do that. And the way I would go about it is once I have the separation, I'm going to go to the daily chart and I'm going to look for signs where the momentum is dying. Now, if you look at what happened, we broke out here, but look at what the MACD did. The MACD actually not only didn't get confirmed by going to a new high, it actually made a lower peak below the signal line. I call this um, a divergent pinch play, okay? And if we get... Um, a pinch in that doesn't cross the signal line, we should be on the lookout as it reverses back to the downside. We're getting that. So that's the play. Now, the way I would handle it is because the strength, there's so much strength on the ADX on the daily chart here, I'd want to time it off the hourly and keep my risk a little bit tighter. So I think what I would do is um, probably be drawing in this trend line as this is breaking out. Remember, this is where we're getting the divergence showing on the daily chart. So I draw in my trend line and basically this big red bar down would be a signal. And then the second one would have been the pinch play here, but it ended up opening up via a gap. But still, you'd be looking at it here or on this big red bar coming down. Those are the two entry points to use. And it's basically a three time frame uh, play. We've got um, a break of the eight, uh, a, a failed new high with divergence taking place, not only on the MACD, but also on the DI lines. I want to see that as well. And uh, where green DI does not confirm. And then we go down to our hourly to time it. And then the target would be in most cases would be coming down a little bit closer to the 18. I don't know that that's going to happen on this one. Let's just look at the COF. This is the other example. Now this one actually has a little bit more time. And um, if you look at the way this played out, it did the same thing. It went to a new high, new high here, and no confirmation here. So it's sort of tipping its hat. And I would say you had this narrow range kind of inside bar here. The moment you take out the low of that bar, in fact, the, the bar below it, the two lows here, and you break that to the downside, then um, that's really where I would be looking to enter those. Now, you'd want to be able to figure out a way to time that off the hour, or at least lower the risk. This would be the open, and I'd probably use this last peak as my stop in this instance um, to play it that way. So it's possible you get one more rally here on the hourly and you could still play it. But here's the problem with this. I don't want to get a move all the way down to the 18. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think you're, you're, you've got a massively strong trend in place with a rising ADX. Don't think that this is coming all the way down to the 18. It's probably only going to work its way back down to uh, this support area right here. So, um, that, so just look for a retracement if you're going to play these. If the ADX is really strong, you got to be very careful about uh, going nuts and trying looking for a big, big pullback. So hopefully that helps. All right, let's look at the next uh, request that came in, this MELI. I like the looks of this. Now, on a monthly chart, this has made a pretty big move to the upside. And um, I don't know that I want to play this on a longer term time frame, but on the weekly, we've got a nice little pullback that's developed. We're formed a pinch play. We've got good momentum in place. And then if we go and look at what's taking place on the daily chart, we've pulled back. The MACD was overbought, and now it's worked its way back down to the zero line. The ADX was overdone, showing strength to the upside, and now it's at a low point um, below both of the DI lines. So I'm looking to get in. Now, the problem is off my course, you'd be drawing in a trend line like this. I don't really like that. It's too far of a move to break the trend line. So what I would be looking for is some kind of a little higher low to form here, holding the 18. Um, so let it kind of 
Uh, maybe even pushes up a little bit more, pulls back, and then turns to the upside. And I think that's really where I'd be watching. But I would view this as a trading play, probably for a move up towards, um, you know, something like 1750, 1775. Okay, let's look at the, this go easy on the Toronto exchange. Look at this base breakout. I mean, this is a thing of beauty. This is a beautiful chart uh, breaking out here. Uh, very strong momentum characteristics coming out of here. Look at the volume pattern again. Really, really good. Now it's just a question of entry. And I think what we want to see on the daily chart, what I'd be looking for, is we got a lot of strength here. So you're not going to get some kind of a deep pullback and think that you're going to come all the way back down to here. We're just looking for a little, one more little check back and maybe test make these lines come together a little bit more, make this MACD get down a little bit closer to the zero line, and maybe the ADX gets down a little bit closer to 25. So um, you don't want to be too picky on this one because of the strength behind this move, but it is still kind of stretched away from the 18. So I think we get at least another little mini pullback on the daily, maybe a little bit closer to 150 is what I'd be watching for. Okay, let's look at the FCX. Now, just to show you what's going on here, if we go to the yearly, yearly chart, all right? <laughs> uh, we we want to look at this periodically because um, it's showing an inside bar here, all right? Last year was an inside year. So when we have an inside year, we want to be recognizing that. And you can really see it on the... Um, if you look at this, I can put the box around last year is here, and then this was the prior year. See that? So we're making an inside year. Now, if we take out the high of the inside year, we should really be on the lookout for what could be a potential explosive move to the upside. But look at how the MACD is also looking really attractive. Uh, we've got kind of this double bottom forming as it's working its way back down closer to the zero line with low ADX. No sign of sellers, really. Um, so if this turns up, this could play really well, I would say, this year. Um, but I'd like to see at least some sign at a minimum, I want to see a higher low form and maybe even take out this prior peak that was made uh, late last year. All right, let's look at the CFG. So there's a lot of improvement in the banking area. Um, the regionals are a mixed bag. And I would put this in the in the kind of the bag where I don't think it looks quite as attractive. And the problem you've got is that you've made a nice move, but you're rallying into a declining 18-month line, right? And there's not any real strength in this move at this point at least not on this time frame. If we look at it on the weekly chart, we've made a decent move here, but you see how it's not really registering on an ADX basis? We've got a little bit of DI. MACD has climbed above. I'm not saying we can't trade a little bit higher, but we've got a lot of resistance overhead still to deal with. I want to find the stocks, and there are plenty of them in the banking area that I've been actually talking about over the last few weeks um, that I think you could take a hard look at um, even the COF is something that I'd be watching for on a pullback uh, that I think looks uh, really attractive. You could go look at WFC as well. I think those look a little bit stronger to me. This still has too much overhead supply. You could play it for a short-term trade, but that's probably about it. Um, okay, NOC. So this uh, the question here was about a spike in ledge. And I don't really see this as a spike in ledge. So if you're looking at it on a daily chart, I don't really see that as a spike in ledge pattern. It's not, we want something really violent that kind of washes people out and then drives to the upside. Kind of like what happened here, where you got a big washout and then it started to form a ledge. But if you notice, it just kept going sideways. This went on too long, so it doesn't really qualify. But this is more of what I'd be looking for. Big spike, heavy volume, flush move rally up and then form this kind of ledge pattern and then taking out the upside of the ledge. We never really did that. We've done it. We did it here, but that was too late. It was already kind of had fallen off uh, since that period. So not as attractive from that standpoint. So I, you know, I, when I look at this chart, we've rallied up to a flat 18 month line with MACD hasn't really turned up. We had a good up bar up to 500, but now it's kind of, it's just sort of sloppy. So I think what I would be watching for is a move up through this area 
up here. Let's just see what this level is, right around 485, something like that. If we can get that, then I'd start to warm up to this a little bit because you'd be back above the 18-month. You'd be uh, getting back above this big down bar here and above this big reversal bar that just took place recently. So it could be on your watch list, but I, I, I don't think it's anything that's imminent. Um, let's just look at one more here, AMD. Um, has made a really nice move. We had a, a great setup last year as it pulled into the 18 month late last year and then has taken off, made a strong move to the upside. Now it's getting a little a little bit away from the 18 week line, a little bit away from the 18 month line. I think this is a good spot for this to take a breather to start the year. Sort of what I was talking about with the QQQ. Stocks that make big moves going into the end of the year tend to take a breather in the first quarter and potentially even in the first six months. But I think in the near term, we'll just look for this to alleviate some of this overbought in the uh, uh, over the next uh, month or two. Thanks for watching the show today. If you'd like me to analyze one of your stocks, uh, go ahead and send it to stocktalk at stocktarts.com and I'll work it in into the next show. Uh, also, if you want to learn more about MACD and ADX in multiple timeframes, I suggest checking out my YouTube channel, which is called Invest Like a Pro. Uh, have a great week and we'll see you next time.